The next section is about chemistry. It's divided into elements, compounds and mixtures, chemical reactions, weathering and the particle model. We'll start with elements, compounds and mixtures. To start with, we'll look at elements. In chemistry, we need to be able to recognise elements, compounds and mixtures from their structures and from their symbols or formulae. So in this next section, we're going to run through the most common elements and compounds you need to know well. First of all, elements. Elements can't be split up into anything simpler. They each contain only one type of particle called atoms. Everything on Earth is made up of elements. There are about 112 different elements, and each one is made up of one type of atom. But the atoms of oxygen will be different from the atoms of gold, which again are different from the atoms of sulfur. Each element has a name and a shorthand symbol to identify it, and you need to know the symbols of the 20 most common elements. With a few exceptions, there are some simple rules about the symbols for elements. To make it easier, first of all, let's split them up into metals and non-metals. So the metal magnesium takes the two letters from its name, M and G. The first letter is always a capital, and the second is lowercase. Aluminium is AL. Calcium, which naturally occurs in milk, is Ca. Zinc has its first and third letters to make Zn. The others are a bit more tricky because some are derived from Latin names for the element. Lead has the letters Pb from the word plumbum, which is where we get the word plumber from as they used to use lead pipes in their work. Silver has the letters AG from the Latin word Argentum. Similar to gold, AU is from Aurum. Sodium is NA from Natrium. Potassium is K from Calium. Iron is FE from Ferrum. And copper is CU from Cuprum. Remember, the first letter is always a capital and the second a lowercase letter. You also need to know the most common non-metals. These are much easier to remember, as almost always the first letter corresponds with the name of the element. Let's run through them. First, the gases. They're H for hydrogen, O for oxygen, N for nitrogen, which is the main component of fertilizers. Cl for chlorine, used in disinfectants. HE for helium, and AR for argon. Now the solids. S for sulphur, not to be confused with SI for silicon. And finally, C for carbon. If you're not sure of any of them, why not rewind and go through them again, making a note as we go. So an element is made of just one type of atom, such as carbon or gold. But other elements, such as oxygen or hydrogen, exist as molecules. When atoms are joined together, they are called molecules. But remember, they are still made up of only one type of atom. This is oxygen gas. Two atoms of oxygen joined together, which makes it a molecule. This is carbon, just one atom. And this is the gas hydrogen, which, like oxygen, has two atoms joined together, so it's a molecule. So you need to know that elements are pure substances made up of atoms which are all identical, and some exist as molecules which are identical atoms joined together. Now let's move on to look at compounds and mixtures. 
First of all, compounds are made up of two or more elements joined together. To make a compound, the atoms must be from different elements, which join to form a chemical bond. The smallest part of a compound that can exist is called a molecule. Let's have a look at a very common molecule. Here's a very familiar compound, water. This apparatus uses electricity to release the elements which make up water. Bubbles of gas are released from two electrodes, oxygen bubbles from this one, and big hydrogen bubbles from here. The oxygen and hydrogen collect in the top of the tubes. But look, there's twice as much hydrogen as oxygen. Why? When particles join together in a compound, they cling together very firmly. The combinations are called molecules. The particles can only join together in specific combinations. In water's case, it's two hydrogen particles for every one oxygen particle. No extras are allowed. All molecules in a compound are the same. And like elements, compounds also have symbols to represent them, called chemical formulae. So water has the chemical formula H2O. This tells us that it contains hydrogen and oxygen atoms, and that there are two hydrogen atoms for every one oxygen atom. The oxygen atom doesn't have a number after it, as there's only one. Carbon dioxide is written CO2, showing there are two oxygen atoms to every one carbon. Remember, if you're writing these yourself, write them accurately with a two slightly lower than the letters. A compound is a substance made up of different types of elements joined together chemically. So compounds are always made of molecules. Besides elements and compounds, you also need to know about mixtures. Mixtures are substances that are not chemically joined up and can be easily separated. Air is a good example of a mixture, being made up of several gases. So is ordinary tap water, which has minerals dissolved in it. Orange juice, seawater and crude oil are other mixtures where the different substances can be separated out. In this next clip, see how many different elements and compounds are used to make up this surprising product. This recipe is the key to the future. Take three litres of water, add sufficient fat to make a small bar of soap. Take enough carbon for 55 pencil leads. Mix with enough phosphorus to produce 135 match heads. A generous helping of calcium always improves the result. Take enough sulphur to produce a couple of stink bombs. Extract every atom of iron and zinc from a galvanized roof tack. Garnish with traces of magnesium and potassium. Season with a pinch of salt. Bake in an oven at 37 degrees for 270 days. Monitor carefully until incubation is complete. So, how many elements and compounds did you spot? Well, to make a baby, there were three compounds, distilled water, fat and salt, and eight elements. More seriously, here are some top tips. Examiners can be very picky when it comes to marking formulae. For example, if you're writing carbon dioxide, the C and the O must be capital letters and the two must be lowercase. They won't give you marks for it if it's not obviously like that. For the higher test papers, you also need to know the chemical formulae for commonly used compounds. Now, when naming compounds, there are two useful rules to remember. Rule one. When two elements, such as a metal and a non-metal, combine to make a compound, the non-metal part comes second, and the ending becomes "-ide". So when sodium combines with chlorine, 
the chlorine changes to ide to make sodium chloride, common or garden salt. With magnesium and oxygen, the compound is magnesium oxide. Rule two is with three or more elements, a metal, a non-metal and oxygen. Here the non-metal changes to something eight. For instance, the elements copper, sulfur and oxygen combine to become copper sulfate, CuSO4. And calcium, carbon and oxygen atoms combine to make calcium carbonate, CaCO3. A particular problem is mixing up ides and eights. Remember, ides are when two elements are joined together. Eights are when three or more are joined together, and one of the elements is oxygen. Can you name these compounds? ZNO, K2CO3, CuSO4, and FES. Why not stop the tape and have a think about them? So let's have a look at the chemical formulae. ZNO is zinc oxide. K2CO3 is potassium carbonate. CuSO4 is copper sulfate. And FES is iron sulfide. If you weren't sure of the answer, here are some key points to help you remember the rules. When two elements combine, the ending is usually something ide, such as sodium chloride. When three or more elements combine and one of them is oxygen, the ending will be something eight, such as copper sulfate. Next, the periodic table. The hundred or so elements we know about can be put into a table form, which we call the periodic table. The periodic table shows all the elements that exist, using their symbol to represent each one. Now, for your test, you don't need to learn all of this off by heart, but you do need to be familiar with some of its features. First, the periodic table is organised so that the elements belong to certain chemical families. These are elements with similar properties, and they're shown close to each other. The main ones you need to know are the metals on the left and the non-metals on the right. A zigzag line divides the two groups up. Secondly, the most reactive metals, such as lithium, sodium and potassium, are over here on the far left. And as we go to the center of the table, the metals are less reactive. Now for key stage three, you don't need to learn all this. If the periodic table comes up in your test, you will always be given a copy on the paper. <laughs>